Well, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, on the podcast, you know, we're going to revisit, you know, uh, the uh, Mudson Park Field House and also get into talking about Mayor Eric Adams out of New York. Some developments is going on with him while he's dealing with the migrant crisis in New York. So, as you know, in Chicago, they had a big uh, protest. People was very upset. Uh, with the elected officials because they just going to come into their community and tell them we're going to take 200 migrants, close your uh, Mudson Park field house where you having your senior events, kids are, are, are doing programs, uh, sports, all kinds of things are happening for that particular community. We're going to push you out and bring in 200 migrants. Didn't get a vote on it, anything. As you know, people's very upset by that. And in that instance, I told you that you don't live in a democracy. A lot of people in the comments say, no, we don't have a democracy. We have a constitutional Republic, but yet the Democrats don't say we live in a constitutional Republic. They say that we live in a democracy and black people need to get out there and souls to the polls and, 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 and vote Democrat to save democracy. But yet when it comes down to it, you don't live in a democracy because clearly you cannot get nothing done with your voice unless you get hostile case in point. So the people were saying, no, I don't want these people here. Now let's go ahead and roll this clip because I want you to hear exactly what Brandon Johnson has done after the fact, after people was upset about them wanting to place 200 migrants in their field house. Frustrated neighbors in the city's Galewood neighborhood on the far West side say, despite the city's plans to put a migrant shelter on hold at Amundsen, at the Amundsen Park Fieldhouse. Park supervisors were told to turn their keys in last night. They also say youth athletes were asked to leave mid-practice. Donald Glover, president of the Amundsen Park Advisory Council, says this is the city just doing whatever it wants to do. Well, we were told it was on hold, and, and this was all done right. The really, 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 really bad. The alderman had a said that this was all, you know, resolved, and it's not. Now, Alderman Chris Taliaferro responded to their concerns in person last night. He says Mayor Johnson told him this was all just a miscommunication. He told me that there was a misunderstanding and that he did, he did instruct his entire staff that this, in, this process would be put on hold. Now, there's two things I want to point out with this. One, listen to the language. He said it's going to be put on hold, meaning we're going to pause it. But he did not say we're not doing it at all. That's not an option anymore. These people don't want it. He said put it on hold. So let, let me tell you what, what, what the plan is. They're going to put it on hold because right now there's a lot of pushback, right? Y'all out there, y'all waiting to see what they're going to do. Some of y'all out there at night trying to see. So he going to probably try to wait y'all out maybe about, week, two weeks, maybe up to a month and let it die down. Right. Until y'all think everything is all good. And then what they're going to do is while y'all sleeping in y'all house about uh, two in the morning, three in the morning, when you wake up in the morning, you're going to see 200 migrants in that field house because listen to what he said. It's been put on hold. It's not a definite no. It's not that, okay, you guys don't want them there, so I can't put them there because you don't want to remember because we're supposed to be living a democracy, right? And a democracy would say if the people don't want it, then I can't do it as the mayor. Understand? So it's been put on hold. Now, what I will say is this. They're still going to try to put them over there. So don't, don't let off of that. Number two. You won a small battle, but you did not win the war. Now, what I mean by that, a small battle would be, okay, you have pumped day breaks not for now because you stood up. But see, the thing is with black people and what's been our issue and problem in the modern times is that let's say you stand up, you stand against them, you loud, you proud, you angry, you aggressive, and you're not violent at all in the process. And they can't take that kind of pressure from you. But one thing the Democrats know about you is that all they got to do is wait you out because you don't stay with anything. A lot of you, you may stay with it one week, two weeks, and then you're going right back to business as usual. The Democrats know this about you. They know this. So they will do this to you 
and then turn right back around and put them migrants in there. And then once they in there, they in there. And it's not really much you're going to be able to do once they put them there. So if you're really serious about protecting that field house, then you got to have somebody out there all the time watching, especially, especially in the middle of the night. Cause more people going to be out there during the day watching, but in the middle of the night, Oh yeah, you got, you got to be out there having somebody like that. So when you win a battle, it's even a, a life lesson. You don't get excited about winning battles. You can say, okay, great. You continue until the war is over until it's done. So the job is done. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some, but the ultimate goal is to get Brandon Johnson to end sanctuary city status for the city of Chicago and start talking to him and say, Hey, okay, now it's ended. What we're going to do is get these people moved on somewhere else. One thing I told the black community is tell Brandon Johnson, Hey, we don't have the resources, but you know what? Though those suburbs up there with the white people, they got all that money, put send them up there because they got the resources. The schools are better, all kinds of things. Send them over there. You can't be putting them here. We don't even have the resources for ourselves. We don't. Now, of course, a lot of people, as you know, they're coming from the state of Texas because they Chicago, New York, and Denver and others have been identified as sanctuary city. So Greg Abbott said he's going to continue to send the buses. He said he's not stopping until those mayors get on board with what he got going on. And maybe he'll start pulling back on sending migrants. It is what it is. Cause Texas has been dealing with it for a very, very long time. So stay on top of that issue, Chicago. Let's go all the way to New York city with mayor Eric Adams. Of course, the Democrat party has been upset with mayor Eric Adams because he says that the migrant situation is going to destroy New York. As you know, it, he has promised that migrants will be coming to a neighborhood near you. He let you know that ahead of time. So what he decided to do was to get on a plane and head to Columbia. Yes. Mayor Eric Adams went all the way down to Columbia because he wanted to find out what is really going on in Colombia, even though the people come from Venezuela, but one of the first stops is Colombia. So he went down there. Now, when I saw this video, I said, Hmm, this is interesting. So I want you to watch a short clip of Mayor Eric Adams trying to get some information about what's going on in Colombia. So as you heard that the people were screaming at him and it was a white person, as you heard in Colombia, screaming at him while he's trying to get information. Now they followed Eric Adams all the way down to Columbia to go protest him. Most people just don't have money just to get up and go from America to any kind of foreign country on a whim. So who's funding them? The so-called protesters to go show up. You're in Colombia. You would think you would be hearing Spanish, right? But no, you are hearing white people speaking English. Now there was another picture and they paid these people to do this. We know this. Let's put this picture up. Look at this picture. Now, if you're looking at this picture on the screen here, you couldn't even get right that he is the mayor of New York city. Why you say New Jersey? It doesn't even make sense. It don't. And then you're going to call him a migrant hating creep. Really? You, you, you are uh, uh, liberals that that's paying these poor people to carry these signs. First and foremost, Eric Adams has not been a migrant hating creep we would not be making videos about him right now. If he so-called was because let's say if he caught a, and why you got to hate people because you don't want somebody in your house, your house, you have to protect it. Now his house is supposed to be New York city. He's supposed to be protecting New York city. He's supposed to be protecting the citizens there and the citizens pay taxes for services, resources, etc. And if he says we don't have all this money, to be paying for extra people who's not paying anything, who's not giving nothing at all, taking the resources and they keep doing this is going to destroy New York city as we know it. How is that having any kind of hatred? He has literally spent billions of dollars out of taxpayer money to people who haven't contributed a thing to America. Didn't fight in the war, 
don't pay taxes, don't do anything. So right there, I have to disagree with. Because in the beginning, he was like, hey, all immigrants are welcome. Well, if he was saying all immigrants are welcome, but after about a year of that, he said, oh, okay, all right, all right, that's enough of this. So no, I, I have to defend Eric Adams on that. And I'm not the biggest fan of Mary Eric Adams, but even just like Brandon Johnson, I'm not, I'm not going to sit up here and accuse them of things they're not doing and they're not saying. I just want them brothers just to do right. That's it. I want them brothers to do right by the people, especially the people that voted for them, which would be a lot of black people. Right? So, so check this out. So remember I was discussing about where all this money coming from, because these people are poor people. These people don't have money like that. So how are they paying all this money to go from Venezuela, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Guatemala? That's a lot of countries they're coming from. They're not really coming from Mexico like that. They're really not. Where does the money coming from? Then word on the street is the Vatican. The Vatican and, and a lot of other NGOs, non-government organizations, are paying money for the migrants to come up here. They're paying. Now, think about it from their point of view. Hey, you want to go to America? Well, shoot. Yeah, I go, man. I heard I'm get, I can get something free over there. Yeah. 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 Well, I pay for it. Oh shoot, man. Let me, can my kids, my wife and my kids too. Yeah. Yeah. Pack your stuff. Let's go. You're going no, it's going to be a long journey though, but I pay for it. Don't worry about it. It's all expense paid. All you got to do is turn yourself in at the border of America. Tell them you want to seek asylum, tell them violence and they'll let you in. Now you may have to, you have to sleep on the floor a little bit, but eventually you're going to get a job. They're going to give you work permit. Eventually like, like this is the thing. People, you know, it, it's like we need to start getting, start talking to the migrants seriously. And I got to figure out, you know, figure out a way to get, get that done as well. Cause if you talk to the migrants, they're going to tell you, I know they're going to tell you, Hey, somebody paid for it. I know good well that somebody's paying for it because beyond with you, the migrants themselves, and I said this, they're being used. They're being used, uh, uh all the way around, taking advantage of their situation then the, 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 the bad part about it, you're using migrants for cheap labor. Then you're putting them in a bad situation because the citizens going to be upset with them for the most part. They're not going to be upset with the politicians. And that's why on this program, I always said, we don't go after no migrants. We don't even talk about them like that. We don't say, hey, they the problem. No, 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 no. We keep it on the politicians. We keep it on the corporations because they're the cause of the problem, not the migrants. Listen, the politician and the corporations love when you fuss and argue with the migrants and, and, and do things to him or her. They love that because they get to keep their hands clean and laughing at you because they causing a problem and they are still getting in an office and everything. You know what I'm saying? So we say is look at what the Democrat party is doing. Look at what these corporations is doing. That's what we're going to focus on at least here. Cause we're more intelligent here and we understand who's doing it. And Chuck Schumer already told you to play already. He told you if you don't remember. Now more than ever, we're short of workers. Uh, we have a population that is not reproducing it on its own with the same level that it used to. The only way we're going to have a great future in America is if we welcome and embrace immigrants, the dreamers and all of them, because our ultimate goal is to help the dreamers, but get a path to citizenship for all 11 million or however many undocumented there are here. On top of that, Eric Adams now wants to change the things in New York. So Mary Eric Adams is seeking to suspend New York City's longstanding obligation to provide shelter to anyone who asked for it. This has official struggle to find housing for thousands of migrants arriving from the Southern border. On Tuesday night, they said Mayor Adams asked the judge to allow the city to put aside its legal obligation to provide shelter to single adults, arguing in court that the city should be able to temporarily lift the mandate during an emergency. They say with more than 122,700 asylum seekers having come through our intake system since the spring of 2022 and projected costs of over 12 billion for three years, they say it is abundantly clear that the status quo cannot continue. Mayor Adams said in a statement, they say in a letter to Erica Edwards, a New York Supreme court justice, the city lawyers asked 
for the 1981 consent decree that requires the city to provide shelter to be temporarily suspended. It said they also asked for the rules to be suspended whenever the governor or mayor declares a state of emergency and there's an influx of people seeking shelter. And they say a legal aid society which filed the lawsuit that led to the right to shelter and the coalition for the homeless issued a joint statement saying that the change would gut protections for homeless people. And we know right now temperatures are dropping in the North of, of our country. And we know homeless people do not need to be on the street, especially as I said before in New York with them big mama rats. That's about this freaking big. Doesn't make any sense. You better believe if I had to be the mayor of New York, my number one priority, one of my number one priority would be get rid of rats. Them things are huge and nasty. But I agree with them. This will hurt the homeless, but they need to amend that. They don't just say, just get rid of it. Say, no, 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 no. This is how I would do it. We want to get rid of it, but we only going to accept for legal residents of the United States of America and U S citizens. We will, we'll make sure to house them, but everybody else can't just come in this city. Who's not a legal resident. Who's not a citizen of the United States of America. You can't, we, we're not obligated to deal with them. You understand? We don't supposed to be giving them nothing. If they come up here, they got to get out the mud on their own. It shouldn't be none of our services. Listen, for you have an opportunity to come here. That should be opportunity enough for you where you can go ahead on and do what you got to do. You understand? So no, I don't agree with that part of citizens or legal residents of this country, not having that opportunity, especially how cold it is in New York. Now they said that this is the city's most significant and damaging attempt to retreat of its legal and moral obligation and said to provide a safe and decent shelter for people without homes since that right was established 42 years ago, according to what the group said, the street homelessness is say would balloon to a level unseen in our city since the great depression. They added, they say the city's letter came and say, as Mr. Adams uh, had left on that, you know, four day trip to Latin America to witness a flow of migrants at the Darren gap and to dissuade people from traveling to New York city. It's a top aide for mayor Adams, Ingrid Lewis Martin recently called on the federal government to close the borders. They say Mr. Adams sought to distance himself from those comments on Tuesday, reiterating his position that the border should not be closed, but that migrants should be sent to other cities. Mayor Eric Adams has said that we believe the border should remain open. He said in a news conference that that's the official position of the city, but we have made it clear there should be decompression strategy so that we could properly deal with the volume that's coming into our city. Now, if I had to deal with an extra 122,000 people, my mindset would be, no, the border should be closed. We got enough. It is enough for right now. If you got one asylum, there's other countries you can go to, you know, Hey, if you want to go to Canada, you can, you can go to Canada, but you can't come here. You take you a plane, go to Canada. Cause I guarantee you, if, if, if America starts sending them people to Canada, Oh, they'd be crying. Oh, Canada be crying. Right. So, so no, the border should be closed. Ah, no, no, no. To me, it's like in one instance, you're saying that, you know, it's going to destroy New York. In another instance, you don't want the border closed. Come on, bro. If you don't want the border closed, they're going to keep coming to your city because Greg Abbott going to keep sending them. Mayor Adams said that the city's landmark right to shelter protections were never intended to apply to the extraordinary circumstances our city faces today. No, you need the right thing for you to say was the right to shelter protections were never intended for people who aren't uh, citizens or people who just jump in the line for people who are uh, considered uh, economic migrants, illegal immigrants. It wasn't meant for that. Now that's, I mean, that would be a proper thing to say. Why the word salad? Now he said that the city was not seeking to end the 1981 consent decree, which was issued to say in the Callahan versus Kerry case, but he argued that New York city should face the same rules as other cities in the state. He said the new letter is part of a months long legal battle over the city's right to shelter mandate. It said in May, the city asked for changes to the mandate. Since then, the Biden administration announced that it would grant work permits to hundreds of thousands of Venezuelan migrants. It said in a letter, it said the city said it should be relieved of its obligations when the number of homeless people seeking shelter grew by 50%. Over a certain time period. Now, Christine Quinn, the former city council speaker, is say, and chief executive of WIN, is a network of shelters for women and children, 
said that the policy changes could affect the families with children and say it will start New York down a slippery slope that would undoubtedly put families with children in harm's way. And I said, now Mayor Adams continues to criticize Mr. Biden on Tuesday night, saying at an event, and said, with business leaders, said that he could not remain quiet when the cost of providing services to migrants would force him to cut other programs that help New Yorkers in poverty. He said, on this issue, I believe the White House is wrong. He said, Mr. Adams said he planned to speak with the local media. It's on his trip to Mexico, Ecuador, and Colombia to let potential asylum seekers know that they would not find hospitable conditions if they came to New York. He said, we are not going to be a five-star hotel, as many people have told us. They say, if that can resonate and start that conversation from there, he said, I'm going to try. Now, Ann Williams Isom, that's a deputy mayor for Health and Human Services, said at a news conference on Wednesday that the city was seeing a significant surge in the number of migrants who are arriving, he said more than 600 every day. He said where previously it was three to 400 were arriving per day. He said the number of migrants in the city's care has not skyrocketed, she said, because of new policies, what kind of migrants in the city's shelters to reapply after 30 to 60 days, and improve case management to help them apply for temporary protected status or move elsewhere. He said about 13,500 people have received 60 day notices and about 2,100 have received 30 day notices City officials said, it said the city has helped so far um, migrants uh, submit about 5,000 asylum applications. But you know, also something that's happened in New York as well. On top of the babies they're having, they're saying there's been a rise of tuberculosis that's happening in New York right now too, because you're not vetting nobody. You don't know where these people come from. You don't know. Listen, I'm not trying to, I just got to say it. People coming from these different countries, environments that we're not used to, certain, certain type of uh, uh, medical issues that we don't see. And they could bring that over here and cause a major issue. I mean, that, we talking about just a health standpoint. That's anybody. People have to be vetted. Just like during the pandemic, they were vetting people. Hey, let's test you. Why they were testing you? Because they want to make sure you didn't have anything. These people are not being tested at the border. They're not going through a health screening. They're coming in. And you and when you're not testing the people, you could bring whatever they could possibly have. I'm not saying the majority of people coming over here with some sort of, you know, uh, uh, contagious disease, but you're moving people from, you know, their countries where they don't have access to certain type of health screenings. They don't, they don't have, they don't not go into the doctors. They should some of them because they're poor people. They're just trying to work. And, and you know, when, when you're poor and don't have anything, the doctor is not so unless you just feel like you just can't work because your tooth is in pain. You got some sort of pain in your body. Then that's a lot of times you go to the doctors. You just, but if it's not that, you don't know what people are bringing over here. Then as we, we are hearing, even in New York, you know, they, they out here doing the same thing they were doing in Chicago. They're getting involved with criminality. Some of them are starting fights with American citizens. Some of them are getting on, on, on the, the track and, and, and getting involved with, with some, you know, selling themselves because that's, that's normal for some of them, I guess, where they're coming from because some of them countries is legal to do that. Now in this country it's really not legal to uh, engage in prostitution. It's not, it's illegal, but some of them are doing that. And that's in the criminality aspect. We got enough people in this country that commit crime. We don't need to be importing people committing it, right? I'm like, if you're going to import somebody, import the best of you, who you can get. Even if it's workers, import the best ones, right? People who got a clean record. They're not running the criminal records of these people. They're not checking if they, you don't know who they are. You don't know if they're emptying their jails and say, hey, you can't stay in this country. You stay in this country, you're going to be in prison, or I'll let you out, but you got to go to America. You don't know if they're doing that and get rid of their criminal class. You, you just don't know. And that's the problem. They letting so many different people in this country every day. So many. And, and, and that doing that is going to blow up in their face one day. And you know what? As a black American, I only thing I'm going to say is, well, that's y'all problem. It's not my problem. The reason why it's not my problem, because when black America told y'all, Hey, stop letting all these people in here. You bring these people from all over the world, just dumping them in here. You don't know who they are, their religion, where they come from, anything, right? Like you just saw that if you looked at in Times Square, do you know, they got that Israeli and, and Palestine thing going on right now. They almost came to, 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 to fighting right there in Times Square. 
when you're importing all these different people into the country, you're importing their beefs, their, their issues, whatever the case may be, you're importing it in here. That's why when, when the folks get, get caught up in something, cause they will, you know, don't look at black America. Don't be saying, Oh, y'all was right. Cause every time something happened, they always look at us like y'all was right. Or could, could you say something about it? Or could you get involved? That's why I don't get involved with nothing. Let me, let me tell you something. My policy is this, my people, my problem, not my people, not my problem. If it involves anything related to us in affiliation with something, that's still okay. My problem is related to us, but if it doesn't have nothing to do with us, not my problem because other groups do the same thing to us. They like, Hey, that's black folks problem. It's not my problem. Cause we have to be centered on what's us, what we got going on. I get so tired of watching everybody want our opinion for everything. Black people, what you think about this? Black people, what you think about that? And we don't speak up. We get criticized, cussed out. And I'm going to deal with that Amari Stoudemire thing on my other channel. I'm going to deal with him. Going to cuss us out because we not getting involved with other people's things. We got our own things to worry about. We're trying to get reparations. We're trying to fix our families. We're trying to be, uh, 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 be made whole. We're trying to unify and do everything we can. You know what I'm saying? We got black American business to worry about. Then after fixing black American business, you know, we, we talk about, you know, the brothers and sisters in diaspora and see what we can do to work with them. You know, the ones that want to work with us, right. To make sure we can make the whole black world whole. I, that is my whole thing. I'm not focusing on these other groups unless they are, are encroaching on what we got going on. If the migrants, if they came to Chicago and they weren't putting them in the black community, I wouldn't be talking about it. It might not once again, not my problem. In New York, if they weren't putting them in, in, in encroaching on the black community there, I wouldn't be saying nothing. Not my issue, not my problem. And don't feel bad saying that because we need to take our energy to focus on our community because we have done that for too long. We focus on all these other groups and then what ended up happening? These other groups get up and then they be giving us proverbial, you know, finger so that we learn from that. We say, no, we only gonna focus on our community. We're going to gatekeep our culture. We're going to heavily start gatekeeping our culture. We're going to make sure to honor our ethnic group. And when, like I said, black Americans, the last one to the delineation party, because everybody else delineates, even in the white world, they delineate the Asian world. They delineate the Arab world. They delineate everybody delineates. We was the only last one to the party that's not delineating, but now we get it. We understand there's nothing wrong with delineating. Doesn't mean you disrespect anybody. Even in diaspora, it doesn't mean I don't like a, 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 a person with Trinidad. That's still a brother or sister if they want to be, right? Are we going to honor tr uh, Trinidadians, right? But we also going to honor black Americans and all, everything that come with our culture. There's nothing wrong with that. Because what people try to do is try to say when black Americans delineate and black Americans want to honor our you know, ethnic group and gatekeep our culture, oh, well, we have a hatred for people. No, that, that, that hate mess not going to work because that's, that's a, 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 a trick. They try to use to get you to be this lap dog for all these other groups. So no, 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 no. Like I said, that's just how I get down. I've learned that we don't have to be worrying about what other groups got going on. We worry about us period. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying so this is why I have a concern about immigration is because when, when he's doing this to the black community, I can definitely tell you just from, from personal experience, it's with that, centering, you know, our platforms and centering everything we do on our community is the best thing decision I ever made. The best decision There's so much freedom. Just worrying about family business and not trying to get involved with things that you don't know nothing about because you get involved with other people mess. You may say the wrong thing to them. You may disrespect their religion. You may disrespect their customs. You think you saying one thing to help and now they all pissed off with you. So to prevent all that, I don't say nothing. I'm like my business. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So let's focus more on our community. Like I said, only if something affects us, we say something. I'm talking about in relation to other groups. If it don't, if they don't affect us, keep our mouth shut. We don't get involved. We don't say nothing bad. We don't say nothing good either. We just keep our mouth shut and say, Hey, we'll pray for you. That's far as it go. Cause you can't go wrong with telling somebody we'll pray for you. You know, and, and, and we just hoping for the best for you. But right now, we got some black American business to do. We got some African diaspora business to do. We ain't got, we just ain't got that kind of time. It's just that simple. Um, and always keep that mindset. Cause I'm telling you, that's the, that's the best decision.
that any of us can do at this point. 